What's going on, everyone? It's Adam McCraig with Grandstand Golf. This is our PJ Divas sleepers for the 2021 Open Championship. Craig, this is where it gets fun. And anybody can pick anything. You can pick Brooks, pick Rom, pick DJ, pick whoever you want. Sleepers, this is this is where it gets my juices going a little bit. This is picking, you know, some diamonds in the rough, maybe. I mean, this is ultimately where it's going to be won or lost. You this is where think. it's won and lost. Absolutely. Uh, same thing as our pick show. Be nimble. Expect more withdrawals. We had a bunch already. We're going to have more. It's Wednesday afternoon when we're recording this. Expect more. Maybe. Hopefully not. Knock on wood. Someone in this show. And these stats are taken from Sunday, July 11th. Uh, the one thing I will add here, Craig, is some of these picks, some were obvious, some not. If you're looking, you know, hop in our Discord. Link is below if you kind of want to talk about, you know, how to be different in these big GPPs. I think leaving salary on the table might be a good option for the Open this year. There seems to be a lot of, you know, kind of almost baited or trap type plays uh, that we're going to talk about. But maybe it's a week to leave some salary on the table. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, I also, <laughs> there's, to me, when, when you have majors... Uh, and you get so much talent down in this range, you're oftentimes looking at, like, am I playing the momentum? Am I playing the person who you, you think that the form is really good, but a major champ championship is a totally different ask? Or am I playing the pedigree and, like, the person who maybe the recent results aren't great, but this person has performed before? And, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see where a lot of the ownership goes. And I, I think I'm my, my picks here might be a little bit more momentum-based, but... Yep. We'll see. Maybe a little we'll bit see. of both. <laughs> well, dude, we're just teasing here. Follow us on Twitter at Grand Sand Golf. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. Hit that thumbs up button. 7,500 and below on DraftKings, Craig. These are our six sleepers. Should we jump into it? Yeah. I think the first one here is a real, real out of left field. Out of left field. Daniel Berger, 7,400 on DraftKings. He's 36th there. On FanDuel, he's a little bit more appropriate. 20th, 10,000, even. Okay, so this is kind of the side you pull up all the time. His strokes in total over a certain amount of time. Three months, six months, 12 months, two years. He's 16th in three months. That doesn't include the John Deere Classic. He's six over six months in the field. Or sorry, this is for the top 150 in the field. Yeah. Because, or 150 yeah. in the world. Um, he's sixth in the world over the past six months, tw uh, fifth over the past year, and 10th over the past two years. Nowhere even close to 36th ranked. It, like, it doesn't even, it blows my mind this pricing that came out. It feels like a trap. It feels like bait. I don't know exactly what to do with it. Um, but Daniel Berger, I feel like, is he's in the next tier of, he's in that tier two of professional golfers. Um, and he's priced with guys, you know, that are playing their first open. It, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so what I talked about in our pick show, you know, major performance, open performance and form. Those are the kind of things I'm looking at form maybe isn't glaring to me, but if, if he was 8,700, I would be more worried about it, but he's 74 and I can do things with that. But WGC is a major sense COVID. How has he played in these kind of big tournaments? That's eight events. He does have four top twenties, only one missed cut, you know, so half the time he's getting in the top 20 in these WGCs or major championships. So half the time it's a top 20. I like that. I do think he does play well in these big fields. Limited open experience. So he last played in 2018. He's only made one of three cuts. Again, that doesn't really worry me. That's kind of what you need to go through for, especially as an American, I feel like going through the open kind of ringer to get experience. You need to have a couple of those hiccups, a couple of those stumbles. Uh, but he has made a cut here. Uh, okay. I, I didn't think I was going to go into this, but he has that low apex ball flight. I feel like it's good for the win. He he won on Pebble, which is right along the ocean as well. I feel like his game is better suited for Lynx golf and maybe a lot of uh, American golfers that haven't played Lynx golf before. I feel like Berger's game is a, more of a natural fit. Uh, so even despite not having great form, I like Berger at this price. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in terms of fit, uh, he, he's someone who gains everywhere you know he gains in all strokes yes. and categories so uh, he's just got a well-rounded game uh, you know tier two i think that depends on if you put john rom in tier one by himself or if uh, it depends how big your tier one is maybe but yeah yep. I, I mean without a doubt this 36 pricing 7400 price tag i think seems a little bit off uh the question is is he the highest owned player on the slate and i think you could you can make a pretty good argument that he will be um so the value i love i love the value the game theory decision do you want to you know so say it's high 20 percent ownership on him do you want to just avoid him and then if he has the off week you've gained an advantage on such a high proportion of the field 
I, I, you know, I don't know yet which way I'm falling on that. The value's awesome. I worry about the ownership, but man, to, to get Daniel Berger at 7,400 here, um, I mean, he can be the lowest priced player in a fairly balanced lineup and you're going to have a very, very nice looking lineup. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Okay, so my first one here, uh, you know, similar price range, I guess. We're talking uh, 7200 Ian Poulter, 7200 45th in pricing, 8400 on FanDuel, 58th in pricing over there. Uh, you know, I, I said my mainly momentum plays. This, this is maybe a, a momentum play with a pedigree that... Uh, Seems like it's quite a while ago now, yeah. um, but uh, you know, even when you look at his two-year strokes gain data, uh, it's 48th. So it seems like he's uh, he's priced appropriately for that. Uh, but then it gets better when you look at he, what he's done more recently. Uh, last three months, he's 1.17 strokes gain total, which is 38th. I think in that time, we've also seen him perform well at large events. Uh, last six events, he's gained strokes in six straight. Uh, 1.7 strokes gain total in that time average over those tournaments those are all top 40s he has two top fives in that time so you know ian poulter he he can putt and and when the putter is hot uh, he can get right up to the top of the leaderboards i think that's something we've seen from him for years and uh, that's you know it's not outside the realm of possibility that that would happen in an open championship so last five open championships though he's missed the cut in four of them we have not seen the best golf from Poulter at the Open in recent times, but he has two top threes in this event. It was 2008, 2013, so that was you know maybe more what we're thinking of as prime Ian Poulter. I think he still has the the game to to go out there and put four days together, um, putt well, and, and be in the top ten, maybe in the top five. So to me, it's I, I think his game's in a good place right now in terms of form, and then I think the pedigree. There's enough of a history there that I feel like there's some confidence in the fact that it's not going to be the moment's not going to be too big for him. You know, he's not going to go from leading it uh, on yeah through two rounds to barely being inside the top 60 or something. Like if he, if he yeah. gets his way to the top of the leaderboard, I think he's going to have some stickiness up there. You know, maybe it, it, it falls down to a top 15 or something, but he's not going to fall off the map. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. Actually. I mean, looking at this, the, the fan duel pricing is kind of staring me at the face. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, you know, we're not going to have a live show. So we kind of talk about theory here a little bit. I think, this tournament, this GBP is going to be won between 7,400 and 7,200. There's a lot of options here, a lot of different ways you can go. Poulter is definitely one that's interesting. It's a Ryder Cup year. He does not want to be on the sidelines for the Ryder Cup. He's mm-hmm. going to do everything he can to be, you know, in Padraig's ear and making sure that he he needs to be selected. Um, so that it's a true test. And this is one of the year. last, I mean, this is the last most high profile chance to showcase that. Yeah, and it's he's one of those guys where if he, he kind of just wills it, he, sometimes he just wills the ball in the hole, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's it feels a little bit like that kind of weekend for him. Yeah, I feel like I just jinxed him there by saying yeah, weekend. I should have said <laughs> that was bad. Okay, my second pick here. I love the sleeper, Craig Ricky Fowler, seventy three hundred on DraftKings. He's fortieth there. Fanduel a little bit more expensive, thirty first, ninety four hundred. So I mean, we've seen this in our picks and sleeper show. The, the pricing's a little bit all over on both of the main sites. So price shop a little bit i mean you can make some rosters on either that you can't make on the other one so Mm -hmm. price shop uh form i like his form three or four made cuts in his last four events two top 11s uh so i really like that he's kind of getting to the top end there i did this you know with spieth and with reed how his positive you know strokes in data is over the kind of those events positive strokes in putting and approach in three of the last four positive strokes in around the green and four of his last five obviously a minute there is off the tee not his strength, but you know what? I think with his putter, if he's seen, he's starting to see those putts go in again. He's looking like that Ricky Fowler where, you know, he's got that narrow stance. A putter is just like that pendulum of the grandfather clock. And those putts are just rolling in at a beautiful pace. Um, I love to see that with Fowler. It seems like, you know, that hole is looking more like a bucket than a thimble than it has been in the last little while. So I, I, I love that he's uh, rolling those putts again. But if you look at Ricky Fowler, his links record is very strong. So he's made nine of 10 cuts at the open, five of 10 top 25s. So half the time he's been in the open championship, top 25s, three top sixes. He was fifth here in 2011. Uh, one of the guys you, you, you think of only like the veterans playing back here in 2011. Ricky Fowler's here, um, played well, is one of his first starts in the open. 
and then he won the 2015 Scottish Open. So he he has won on this, you know, on the UK soil. He plays very well in the Lynx course. His putter is hot right now. His approach has been pretty good. I feel like he's kind of one of these guys that's this is like a sneaky good Lynx golfer, and he's coming in with this kind of sneaky good form. Yeah, I mean, I am, uh, we've been talking about Ricky, well, for a while we were talking about both Ricky and Jordan Spieth uh, and, you know, when to kind of jump on the bandwagon again. I'm, I, it's been a few weeks in a row that I've been starting to think that I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on, on Ricky Fowler. Um, I, I don't put too much weight into the, the Lynx record and, and the open record because he is not the player he was in 2015. But his ability to go to those courses, like I get what you're saying, the the ability, to, it's not like it has not translated. It's translated in the yeah. past. If he's playing good golf, he can play good golf there. And so that's what the takeaway is. And if you think that he's playing good golf and he's turning himself around and, and working his way back up into the top 10 of the world, then you have to like the price, you know? So um, I like it. Uh, it's 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 much more hesitant than some of these smaller events where I, I think that his, his chance to go out there and have that resurgent win is, is very high. I'm a little bit more hesitant than I am in those, but I still, I still, you know, I'm long-term, I like the upside. So if, if you like that, then I think you got to play it along the way and, and hope you play it the week it pays off. It just, it just, it's sticking out to me. You know, we got Hideki Matsuyama, Phil Mickelson, John Rahm, like first time winners, odd winners, Jordan Spieth kind of comeback wins. It's just kind of a weird golf year. And Stuart to make it Sink. like Stuart Sink, yeah. To, the exclamation point, you know, on this kind of part of the year would be Ricky Fowler winning the Open Championship and be like, hey, Ricky's back, baby, and he's got his major win. Man, I'd be a fan of it, that's for sure. Yeah, it'd be cool. Uh, my next one here, I'm going Brandon Grace. Same prices uh, as Poulter at 7,200, 45th in the field, 8,800 on FanDuel, 45th in the field. So uh, you're getting a better deal with Poulter than Grace over on FanDuel. Uh, but you look at the numbers again, it, you know, it's been the recent form that has really skewed me towards Grace. Uh, last three months, he's 1.4 strokes in total, 23rd uh, in the world. Um, it kind of falls off gradually until the two year range where he's 0.41 strokes in total, 82nd in the field obviously that value isn't as good but um it's really been the last few months that we we've seen him uh, be resurgent and uh, i mean brandon grace if you haven't been following golf for a long time he he was top 20 golfer in the world for a couple of years uh, back in yeah. i guess 2015 ish uh time frame but so it's not like he's someone that doesn't have the chops and that's where we've seen him playing very well in the last few months you combine that with someone who has played at the highest levels um i think that's a good combination so uh last 13 events he's gained strokes in 11 of them uh, in that time nine top 45s three top ten so you know good maybe not great but i think it's it's moving things in the right direction uh and then you combine that with a strong major record so he's 34 major starts 10 top 25s which is pretty good you know not yeah. quite close to a third of the time he's being top 25 six top tens and then at the open specifically eight of nine made cuts so you know he's someone who played his way up uh, he's south african but he played his way up through the european tour um i think that uh, you tweeted out a good stat that uh, <laughs> nine nine european tour wins uh, only yeah. one of which came uh, in europe so in europe so <laughs> yeah, you know that's so that's one to keep track of but I, I mean to me i think brandon grace has upside we've seen the the uh, pedigree before i like the momentum uh, you could maybe say that you're getting some better deals in that price range but i'm i'm still bullish on brandon grace yeah, Brandon Grace, I mean, from 2012 to 2018, pretty much a top 50 golfer in the world for the most part. Uh, 2015, 2016, top 20 golfer in the world. Uh, so he, he's he been around for a long time and been winning. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So you like, you look, nine European Tour wins. Like, oh, wow, he plays here well. You do a little bit of digging, like China, South Africa, South Africa. Okay, so only one's in Europe, uh, in, the, in the UK. But then you dig a little bit more, do some more research, and you're like, Actually, no, he plays the Open very well. He does play over here pretty well. He's in good form. He's got that win. Uh, there's a lot of things to like for Brandon Grace. I think and and you got to like the narrative, too. I mean, he he lost, I believe it was his father. He lost, won COVID. the Puerto Rico, to, to COVID, uh, mm -hmm. won the Puerto Rico Open right afterwards. And really, mm -hmm. since then, has, has looked like the golfer he was, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, my third and final sleeper here, not really going too far off the board, but I, I like the form. I'm going with form uh, this week. So Harris English, 7,300 on DraftKings. He's 40th there. Vandal, 35th, 9,200. So 
Crazy for him coming in. Uh, two wins in 2021 has the most recent one. He was my one and done. Yeah, I love him for that. Maybe I'm giving him a little bit of a, a head nod for this for giving me that million dollar paycheck. Four top 15s in his last five events. So he's playing really well. He's positive strokes in total in 12 of his last 13 rounds. So he's just playing really well. And if you look at kind of recent hit, like winners, that's what they've been doing. You look at Francesco Molinari. He came in with a couple of wins before he won the Open. Like, you, it's really odd to come to the Open Championship out of form and win. It's much more likely to be kind of on a heater. And I think that's what he does. So, uh, other things I've been talking about steps up in majors last six, six for six made cuts, four top 21s, two top fives, both in the US Open, but we haven't had an Open Championship recently. He's one of these guys, kind of like Brandon Grace, where he has had very good parts of his career and then kind of fell off completely and coming back a little bit with with this resurgence. Uh, but he played the Open Championship from 2012 to 2016. He made four or five cuts. He had one top 15. And we haven't really seen him in, in the Open Championship. We haven't seen him in the Open Championship since then. So he's kind of more of that golfer he was back then. But he has these two wins, playing exceptionally well, 7,300. There's a lot of guys around here, so he will get some ownership, but I'm I'm not too worried. It's not going to scare me away. I, I feel like I can leave salary or get a little bit different elsewhere, like I've said. Yeah, I mean, we saw the crazy form from Harris English sort of through last year uh, and then culminating, I think, in the win uh, at the, the uh, Tournament of Champions. And mm -hmm. then it, it fell off a bit, and then we, we've started to see it again. We, uh, you know, this, this win, but then there's there's been other results other than just the win. And so I, I think if we are seeing that Harris English, then this is, a, I mean, tremendous value at 7,300. Um, yeah. I, I think more likely than not, that is... You know that's kind of where he is at in terms of a, of a talent level, skill level, uh, ability to put it into play on on uh, you know the in competition. Mm -hmm. So I I like it. I think I think he's going to be in my player pool. Um, it, yeah, I, I don't see a whole lot of arguments against it. If you're keeping track at home, that's my three picks. That's my three sleepers. All Americans, Craig. Flag, flagging the six of six Stars Americans. And six of six Americans. Uh, yeah. You're the planting your cup on the American side for the Ryder Cup or what? I don't know. Maybe it's a double. American winning here and, Amer and the Americans winning Whistling Straits. I don't know. Um, Harris English, Hawaii win. Coastal, wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, you know, whether it's the same climate uh, in, in uh, near London as it is uh, in Hawaii, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll give you the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my last one here, uh, Lucas Herbert, uh, Australian. He comes in 6,800, 71st on DraftKings, 8,073rd on FanDuel. Uh, this is really a pure momentum play. You look at the two years data, uh, it's basically zero. It's minus 0 0.01, 122nd in the world. But then you look at the last three months, plus 1.21, yeah. 35th in the world. That's probably even higher because that was not including the uh, Scottish Open where he was a top five. Uh, but really the momentum play has been even more recently, I would say, than the three months. Four straight top 20s. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a couple events uh, in the US and then a couple events in yeah, Europe. that's right. Two straight top fives, including the win. Uh, and he's averaging 2.31 strokes in total in those four events. So I, wow. I think for whatever reason, he is just on a heater right now. Can that translate? This is one of the ones where, to me, he's been on a heater in competition. Can it translate into a major championship competition? Because right. that is not always something players can do. But uh, I, I think we we see decent results. He doesn't have a ton of major starts. You know, we're talking about a different class of golfer than some of these other guys. But six major starts four made cuts and one for one in terms of making a cut at the open with a 51st in 2018. So, you know, nothing to write home about uh, in terms, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, four or six made cuts for a player who really kind of is, is a borderline qualifying or not for majors. I think that that's a, a good sort of, he's not intimidated by the major environment or anything um, yeah. and, and one for one at the open. So I, I think that he is going to be in a few of my lineups because if for whatever reason he has magic in his golf game right now, I want a piece of it. Uh, and I don't really know what the ownership is going to do with him. So if it can stay fairly low and, and you kind of have a, a real upside wild card with him, then 6,800, I'll take it. Yeah, it, it seems like one of those plays where, you know, you look back in 10 years and you're looking through his Wikipedia page, he's like, oh, he has T8 at the 2021 uh, Open. Like, that, that seems to be an outlier. Then you look at his, like, his, his results. Form at the like, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was on an absolute heater. That's why you like, finished T8 here. 
Um, the, the one thing that's concerning me, it's Monday afternoon, but I'm already hearing his name toss out a bit. Hmm. Uh, so I think he might be one of the more uh, popular plays in the six days, but price is so absurd this week that, I mean, play the, play the guys you want to play. Play the guys that you think are going to mm-hmm. do well and then worry about ownership a little bit later. And I think there's enough talent down in the low 7Ks that, the, you know, it's not going to it's not gonna all kind of congregate anywhere. The one other concern I would potentially have, the putter has been hot. So yeah. if you think putting does not carry over, you know, if, if you don't think there's some momentum with the putter, then, uh, you know, I don't think you want to look at him. But if you think the guy, people can get hot with the putter for, you know, a month or, or two months at a time, then, right. which I personally think, uh, I, I think kind of people can just go into a, a period of time where they're feeling it and, and they yeah. can start dropping putts. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I think he's got upside. Yeah, I like it. Thank you everybody for watching. Subscribe to the channel, watch our other videos and comment your favorite play, who you think is going to do the best in the finishing position, under 7,500 on DraftKings, your favorite sleeper. Let us know below. Shoot your shot. Plant your flag. Let's hear it. And maybe not Daniel Berger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a little bit different from Daniel Berger. That's important one. But yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching. Good luck this week. Yeah, good luck, guys. See you next time.